So this is the uh, medium extended uh, air defense system MEADS. Uh, it's a tri-national uh, system that uh, has been 10 years under development. Uh, and we've recently concluded the uh, design and development phase of that program under the auspices of NATO. Uh, we're now in the process of uh, proceeding with our first uh, launch customer, Germany. Uh, one of the unique aspects of the system is that, in fact, it is 360 degrees. So it's not a sectored system. Uh, it has the capability to detect and uh, uh, track and detect targets as well as engage targets 360 degrees. And we had the opportunity to, uh, to test that uh, capability uh, recently, we had three uh, flight tests with the system uh, in which uh, we engaged uh, targets uh, where we uh, had the launcher facing one direction and actually engaged a target behind us. So the missile actually shot out one direction and then had a, a turn and uh, engaged behind us uh, and took out a target. Uh, for our second flight test, uh, we did a dual engagement, uh, which is unfortunately a very real threat today where we have a threat coming in, a uh, tactical ballistic missile coming in from one direction, and then from the opposite direction, we had a cruise missile surrogate coming in the opposite direction. And using a single radar uh, and the fire unit that we had, we were able to engage, track and detect, um, and engage uh, and take out both of those threats simultaneously um, through a single fire unit. Germany, uh, as one of the um, original nations uh, procuring the system, is the launch customer. Uh, so we're, we're in uh, discussions with them uh, now and uh, we'll be on contract by the end of the year is our goal. Um, we've had uh, interest from Poland. The, recently uh, uh, we've been invited at, back in to have discussions there with Poland, so we're in active discussions there. And we've also had some uh, uh, discussions and interest with uh, Italy, who was also one of the original partners in the program. And then many Central and Eastern European countries have expressed interest. And so here in Romania, uh, we've been having a dialogue and, uh, and educating them on the MEAD system and capabilities. Romania can use this uh, with a common, um, using the common NATO architecture. Um, so by putting in place and procuring a, uh, like a battle manager, it could be used as a common architecture, thus reducing costs, um, to provide uh, information from a V-SHORAD, SHORAD type solution all the way up to a lower tier. And simultaneously, it can be provided in a common picture to the NATO uh, environment. And so when you look at uh, if Poland procures it and some of the other Central and Eastern European countries uh, put in place a, a common sensor network uh, uh, with the battle manager, uh, then those countries uh, could, uh, could uh, incrementally implement the capability. The other advantage with this common architecture if a country doesn't have the capability to procure the entire system, which many countries don't have the, the budget to do so, you can buy the components of the system. And if you start with something like a battle manager um, and maybe tie in your local nationally developed or nationally procured sensor, you leverage your existing investments is one advantage. Secondly, if you have that common architecture, you can other nations that have the um, um, launcher and uh, other capabilities, uh, the effectors, um, should the need arise, um, they could augment quickly and rapidly and fly in launchers and, um, and missiles, uh, vectors, to add and augment the system so now that you have a fully functional um, common architecture to, to engage the threat. It's a, it's a real cost-effective uh, way to, uh, for a country that previously maybe not, might not have been able to get involved in NATO air and missile defense to now participate and contribute uh, to that, to not only to their national, but also to the region and to NATO. So it's hard to pin an exact cost, but I can tell you that when you look at it and compare it against other air and missile defense systems and the capability to buy component-based, it makes it very cost-effective, um, not only from a procurement perspective, but also from an operational perspective. Uh, the requirement for the system was that it had to uh, be uh, maintained and sustained um, at 50% less than existing systems today. That means all of your spare parts, the reliability, the operational availability of the system uh, had to be um, addressed in that. The number of soldiers that it takes to operate the system also had to be significantly reduced. And so all of that is built into the system and the capabilities um, and the reliability of it. So when you look at it across the board from personnel, from logistics, from an operational perspective and procurement perspective, uh, if you compare that with uh, other options available on the market today, it really provides a cost-effective solution for countries. MEADS is a lower tier on down uh, capability, uh, whereas Aegis Ashore is, um, is uh, outside the atmosphere. 
and, and covers uh, threats coming in from, from outside the atmosphere. So this really covers everything down below that level um, and covers those lower tier threats that might threaten a country. It can target uh, both uh, aircraft as well as uh, missiles simultaneously. And that's again one of the other advantages is you have to be able to deal with that simultaneously um, and coming from all different directions uh, simultaneously. And that's the system was built uh, to uh, sustain that or support that um, not only now and not only for current threats but also future threats uh, that might evolve over the next 40 years.